to look at it again and um, get oh, people right. um, involved as well. Um, right. Um, so, 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 Jess, you're, you're live. You're now live on. Um, you're, you're now live on YouTube. So, what I'm going to do. Um, I, can you can you just clarify what we are doing next Wednesday? If if you wanted to have one class, or you wanted um, to, what if I was to merge them together? Well, to, well, to be honest, I was thinking if we were going to merge them, I would possibly try and do something that would involve everyone. So uh, I was kind of uh, I was going to have a look at um, possibly maybe the witch house down Port of Kerry, but then if we're merging them, I don't mind um, picking up anything else that I might have, maybe even. Uh, off the top of my head I'm trying to think um even maybe looking at sort of uh, medieval highways and byways or tracks or anything like that something that could really get in maps um aerial photography I don't mind really could have a discussion at the end if you want Carl right uh, but but you know I'm you know I'm doing my weird stuff <laughs> yeah I know this is why I'm thinking maybe if I uh, try and uh, incorporate them both in some sort of way oh you've already got one yeah. viewer on there so that's good mm -hmm. Hello. So what, what I'm going to do is um, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to I'm just going to do I'll, I'll, I'll just stay at the end and whatever. So I'll over to you. Um, and um, yeah. So oh, no, the bad news was there was there's this archaeologist I know. He um, I'm not going to say who, but um, the, the, he, he decided because work had dried up in the pandemic. A, a very well-known archaeologist with an a, with a, a um, an MBE for his services to archaeology. Um, he um, uh, uh, because he was resting too much in the pandemic, uh, Parkinson's crept up upon him, oh. and it's, it's basically ended his career. So uh, mm. um, that's sad. So 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 basically, um, apparently Tom's online now. With there's three watchers online, and um, I'm going to do this. And Jess, over to you. I will go quiet, um, and that that's it. And um, go from there. Oh, and um, thank you very much, Jess. Over to you. All right, thank you, Carl. Um, before I want to start, I just want to sort of recommend um, two books. One's fictional, and one's based on archaeology. But they have a history sort of. Uh, sort of theme to them. So the, the first one I want to sort of mention is by uh, JJ Abrahams. It's called S, um, but it's based on this um, fake book called um, The Ship of Vesuvius, um, and it's a fake author. Um, and you, you're meant to read the book first, and then as you go through the book, there's um, writings in the margins. I have mentioned it to a few individuals, um, and you're meant to try and decipher which of those uh, notes in the, in the margin is in the correct timeline. And you have little pop-outs as well, um, like little postcards they've written to each other. Um, but ultimately, um, Straka, who's meant to be this fake author, um, it, it's, it's about this individual who finds his book and this person's written lots in there. And he seems quite sceptical about the identity of this uh, writer because no one knows who it is. They're not sure whether it's a collection of people or just one person. Um, but you have um, lots of relations in terms of the Soviet Union, um, the Nazi Germany, um, Brazil pops up. And it, it's just quite an interesting book, really, um, to also slot in history. Um, and if you do like sort of investigating things it, it, and sort of figuring them out, little puzzles, then this is a really good book. Um, did frustrate me for a while um, because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but there are a few uh, things online to help you with it. So if you are interested, I, it's definitely a fantastic book. Um, but it's a nice little read. But my second book I wanted to recommend, um, it's quite a good book. It's called Hidden Histories. Um, so it's basically a spotter's guide to the British landscape. Um, and they don't just give you sites to look at um, that you can go and visit. They, uh, they give you diagrams, um, trying to uh, ex uh, explain things. They give you evidence of um, obviously maps and aerial photography, um, rock art. It, it has all, so all sorts in there. And I think it's a good way of um, sort of bringing together all of British history um, and allow make it so you can actually go and see it and I think one of my favorite parts of it all was um looking at um sort of Romanesque uh architecture in the Norman period um and even looking at their fantastic little sort of uh 
carvings in the stone um uh, definitely um has inspired me as well to sort of look further and other things so if you are interested in that as well it, it, it's cheap as chips um you know me i don't spend a lot of money on things because i try not to but it's fantastic and um, th th there's even basic things in there um why do things get buried and um what's this lump and bump what could it mean and it, it, i just think it's a nice way to sort of start um an interest or even just sort of refresh some interest into archaeology mm. and history um it, it's definitely even just sort of looking at this here um, i'm sure carl mentioned this about bring uh, how to move a stand in stone um but they have um these individuals so you have them sort of pointing at the uh, stone there thinking wow. oh gosh what are we going to do here and then they've got all their animals and they're dragging it and uh, they, they're then pulling it up and eventually you have these uh, stone circles. So it, it, it's a lovely book. Um, it's by an individual called um, Mary Ann. Um, is it Otka? Uh, Ot I can't say her last name. Apologies to her. But she has been on Time Team. Um, she's been on a lot of BBC Two uh, shows as well. And even on ITV's uh, Britain's Secret Treasures. Um, and she's done a good job of it. I think the only thing that I have to criticise is that it's not much in there from Wales or the south of England. Um, but it's definitely a fantastic book, quite chunky as well, because um, you can apply that to anywhere else. Um, so what I'll do, I'll ask if there's um, any news from uh, you, Richard. Any news? Uh, no, no, nothing really. No, that's fine. Um, Anne? No, I've just, um, I think I must have misunderstood. Uh, the message last week that I thought you were doing uh, St John's House tomorrow and someone was coming. So I don't know. I, I'm not sure now. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, was fine. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, 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 yeah, I think tomorrow we're doing um, Pavilion Cave. Oh, um, so, right. so, um, but that, that's quite an interesting one because uh, Carl yeah. argued that it was fake. And I think from the get go, people thought that he was saying that the finds are fake and they're not. Is it, It's where they've been found. And obviously we'll get into that because that's a fantastic oh, uh, discussion. Yeah. So, uh, but um, yeah. is, is it someone from St John's House is coming tomorrow? And well, that's what um, Lyndon said, but um, Nathan, yeah, yeah um, he said he said that they were thinking of coming over. I think I know why maybe, they want to come over. Maybe we haven't organised it yet, so you know, I'm yeah. not to, not to worry about. It. Yeah, and I think um, it it is what I've brought into the discussion today, so it is quite good that we're talking about it today, um, mm -hmm. because it refreshes my mind. Um, but it's in terms of uh, the iconography of uh, of the birds there and what that means. And I think uh, the Victorians have really distorted what we know of this building um, oh. and have made it uh, much more different. So I, I am interested mm -hmm. to talk to them because I feel like now I have some simple answers. But um, yeah. it's, I, I would happily sort of take time when, when things sort of settle down for me yeah. to take time and actually go and do some independent research on that for them, voluntary um, as well, because it seems like it's so fantastic and it's it's got the potential for some rich history um mm. but it's, it's, it's just getting it out there really isn't it um trying yeah. to find it um so hopefully um i could give a, be a help to them as much as they could be a help to me um yeah. but, but yeah. we'll have a discussion today and see why everyone thinks um yeah because i think that's the the beauty with things like this is that we can discuss things as well um mm. Mm. So, Pat, is there anything that you'd like to ask or add? Uh, not ask or add, news. Sorry, any news? Oh, I think you're on mute, Pat. Um, I wasn't going to be here tonight because the American women were meeting, but uh, we've postponed it to next Wednesday, so I will be absent next Wednesday. Oh, um, no, that's fine, Pat. Uh, that's I, I fine. thought we were going to miss right. you, but we're going to miss you next week instead. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, fine. Um, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to quick. I don't know whether Carl can hear me. Carl, if you can hear me, could you please um, give me power to uh, share screen? Um, because I can't. If not, I'll give him a quick ring. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. He hasn't got me, has it? No, you had the power yesterday, Pat, when he left, yeah. and then he came back and he snatched it off you again. No, I, I didn't know I had it here. <laughs> It goes on, I think, to anyone the, the, the next person that it just chooses, and then <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't got it there. Yeah. You'll have to phone him. 
<laughs> yeah, I've got him on the phone now. Hopefully he answers. Okay. Fingers crossed. Carl! <laughs> oh, dear. Typical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Typical. Have a job. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity, you know, to to um, have the St. John's House. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's been renovated. So it's, you know, because, I mean, when you see pictures of it in the beginning of the century, it was in a dreadful state. Yeah. No, it was in a dreadful state, but um, no, it's, uh, yeah, but it's like Jess says, you don't know how who's renovated it. And, well, it was Cadu, actually, who renovated it. So, um, but how, if they've actually uh, interfered with um, how it should be. Yeah, are they still open once a month? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we've got to go when the weather improves. When is it? Know. The last last Saturday, first Saturday? I think it's the last Saturday. Is it? Of the month. I keep, that- you know, I keep saying I'm going to do things, like, you know, find out. And I, and I don't. Yeah. I just went and had lunch with Glenda on yesterday. <laughs> Did you? Oh. Yeah. Go all right? She, she, right, I, I can't get hold of him a minute, so I, I, I'm still trying. Um, okay. Carl! <laughs> Carl! <laughs> oh, dear. I bet he's gone to the toilet. <laughs> I would be surprised if he was with Baldrick. I, I've got three different numbers for him, so hopefully if I try and get the other ones that I don't really he's use, he might goat answer. Oh. Goats are eating. <laughs> yeah, she's okay, huh? Yeah, I mean, her husband's still in hospital. That's 12 weeks now. Who's in hospital? Her husband. Her husband? Oh. Yeah. What's he's he got wrong? Since, he's been in since Boxing Day. With what? Um, Guillain-Barr syndrome. Oh. It's like... Uh, I have heard well, of Well, I think, I think it's the after effects of uh, COVID. Yeah. It's immune, some sort of immune condition. He couldn't walk. He still can't walk properly. Oh, gosh. So he can't come home until he's walking, you know, or or, or using a Zimmer or something. He can't even use a Zimmer. But someone else has got it as well in in Corntown. Um. She she was a mother of the children, you know, and um, she can't, couldn't eat or walk or anything. Oh my gosh! She's having COVID, yeah. Hmm. So, um, but she, they are getting better. They he will he will get better, but it's been a long time. You know, you know, Glenda. I mean, she wants to feed everybody. You know, she's. <laughs> she, <laughs> I think we'll try and get her. A lunch party going, you know, <laughs> over at Glenda's. Oh. I fear I might not be able to get hold of him, which is actually quite frustrating. So, I know. Um, hang on a minute. If if I'm to, oh, he, he's the host, isn't he? So that, that wouldn't be great. <laughs> ah. Um, hang on a minute. I could try and figure out this way. I could try and sort of. Uh, Oh. break into his account <laughs> Kids, but I, I know how to log into it so hopefully he hasn't updated anything and I can um try and sort <laughs> it out that way um was it zoom oh gosh <laughs> it, well, why did I ask him before he left yeah <laughs> I don't know because he confuses everybody yeah he confuses everyone <sighs> oh, sorry <laughs> um Now, what would we be fiddling about with YouTube, probably? Well, he, he's left his phone there, so I don't, I don't know. Hang on a minute. I, I'm, I'm on his actual um, Zoom at the moment, so if I can try and find out um, the, 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 the link itself and join that, um, 
it's just the only issue is I don't want to sort of leave it and then oh gosh what am I doing it's a mess if I do it this copy if not we'll have to just do it and um hopefully I can just sort of uh, show you images at the end but if I paste this in and join Oh no, what are you seeing this for for me? <laughs> um, if I type in link, zoom link, um, Oh, it's, it's not coming up at all. So, if it's on, if it's on sort of, let's join a meeting. Because the, the, the frustrating thing is that I'm on his account here. Yeah. But I'm also on my one, so but I don't want to leave in case it kicks me out and then you won't have me at all, <laughs> um, which is what the uh, frustrating thing is about all of this, really. Um, are you calling here, man? Yeah. Oh, I think I might be able to do it now. Um, hang on. Oh. I was on Messenger, I think. Just Messenger. So hang on a minute, I'm just typing in his, uh, I might have been able to fix it. If that's the case, then, oh, I will be proud of myself. So, uh, yeah, What's oh, <laughs> Richard, you probably need to go for a lie down, do you? <laughs> How long have you been on? I know, since... How long have you been sitting there? Since six. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> go and have a cup of tea or something. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I've, uh, Closer? <laughs> and if I just, what, what is, if I sign out again and then sign back into it again and then get the password that way, um, because I, I kind of roughly know his password, but I don't at the same time. <laughs> I, I've said that I'm off at technology, but... <laughs> Um, is it Zoom? Login, sign in. Oh, I can't see it. It won't let me see at all. I'm just going to have to do it this way, guys, and apologies, unless... Hang on a minute, give me a second. I think I know what his password is. Uh. It's disappear for a minute. Take some tablets. <clears throat> Hmm. 
what we need to do is go on YouTube and find out if he's monitoring it. I think I've there's a thing here now. So if I type in this free um This might work. You, you. Hello. What's going on now? What have I done? <laughs> so, 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 did you have you got a little thing in the corner that says on YouTube, live on YouTube? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right, guys, I fixed it now. Um, it's saying just multi, uh, but I've got Carl's picture, so I, I fear I might have taken over um, Carl's thing, and he might have my name on there for a while, but um, <laughs> that's the consequences. <laughs> well, um, right. well done. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually quite proud that I managed to do that, to be honest, because I didn't know what I was doing. So if we sh share screen now and just get straight in, it um, and I apologize for that, guys. Um, but I think we've done good at the fact that I was able to figure it out without actually getting Carl involved. Um, we do that now for the future. Um, and I'm going to write all these details down in a separate mm. instead of my old one. Um, okay. I just is that is that coming up on everyone's feed, yeah. everyone's screen? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. so today I thought do St John's house um it's one of those ones that was quite difficult I'm not sure whether I was because uh, I've had a really bad cold this week I've been testing like no tomorrow for uh Covid and been negative but I've just been feeling so awful and probably mm -hmm. been a bit dramatic about it myself as well um but I, I, I was in a little bit of a sort of poor uh, sort of haze because I researched a lot and then I was looking at it over the weekend and nothing was just clicking for me and then um, looking back there on a fresh mind it kind of made sense um, but it, it, I think uh, the John's house is fantastic and I, I hope that we get to speak to um, the individuals uh, tomorrow but I think the big issue that they have in terms of interpret uh, interpreting the rest of the building trying to find out is it, the, the issue lies with the Victorians. Um, they really did affect the uh, story and the history of this building. Um, we have a lot of evidence of the owners and the occupiers of the 18th century onwards, which is fantastic. Um, the shame that is medieval origins and beyond is a little bit um, skew if. Um, mm. But th 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 that's that's the beauty with anything like this is that we get the the chance to sort of uh, it's it's almost decoding things. It's like a little uh, sort of uh, yeah. I, I feel like a detective when it comes to history and archaeology. Mm. Really, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that's probably why I like solving things because it, it's just something that I love doing. Um, but it, it, it's very limited here. So what I wanted to do was bring a back, uh, bring a background, and then hopefully, if I provided some more information that would help St John's, because I know it's voluntary at the moment, so they're only open on the last Saturday and Sunday of each month, or the last Saturday of each month, um, because they're very limited. They they have volunteers, have them workers there, and I think they've done a great job um, keeping it alive. Um, but so, so I, I would be honoured to help them. Um, and if I have anything of interest, I, I think we should obviously um, look back on this um, and see what we can fit in and see whether we were right in any of our discussions. So today is a little bit of an overview of it. Um, but it doesn't have much funding, like I said. And I think that that's the only thing that puts me to worry with it is that if there's not enough funding, will it just sort of go away? Will people stop caring for it? But I think there's a community there really cares about this building and I just think it's so wholesome because you have a lot of people that, that don't really care and I know um from Cardiff for example and there's a lot of things that that, that are staring people in the face but they, they don't know about it or care because it's almost like that that love for it is gone but I feel like with St John's house that that is there and looking at Bridgend and the archaeology is absolutely fantastic. I know it's, it's like Cardiff is sealed, um, but I feel like you still have uh, some nice little gems and people still know more about them. So we're just going to have a um, an overview of everything at the moment. 
Um, there's a lot of local legend to this building. I think it's distorted the knowledge and the history of the building. And it, it, like I said, it's all down to the Victorians. Um, any of you that are coming to my uh, class tomorrow, and I know you've done this on Tuesday, uh, past, um, this whole discussion of how the 1800s really is problematic for archaeology and history because all we have is accounts sometimes and do you really trust them? And I think it's the early days for archaeology and history and so a hundred is definitely the early days that from my I kind of see archaeology really sort of taking off um when we get the, the mid 1900s but this is all based on what people are seeing it's empirical observation um and then we bring more of a science into it as as time goes on so uh we'll be talking about uh, today just uh, little aspects of it show you some documents um and, and what's really bothering me really is the uh, two motifs there um because we were talking to a man that comes uh, he's a lollipop man he, he pops by sometimes i have a discussion with him you do Anne, and he's been telling me in john's house and he has sent me over some images um and he he was really confused about these motifs the iconography that's been seen there and I, I, I personally think that um, this whole life of Vipian Hospitala, it just doesn't fit the narrative. Um, I personally think that it was either um, a, a very wealthy religious individual that was possibly part of the hospital as part of possibly um, crusade or anything like that, and they just wanted to keep that in their house. Or it could have been a, a, a priest as well, that's, that's another one. But I was just thinking of it, of what this building would have been in the medieval period, and I definitely don't think it was a hospitaler. So uh, we'll get into it. So this is this fantastic building. Um, and I know they have, uh, you can actually have tea and coffee there now as well. Um, and it's a nice way of keeping it alive. Um, it's just one of those buildings I look at and I just think, oh, what what would have been seen? Uh, imagine all the things that would have seen, all the different changes, and it's still there. Um, it's still interacting. The history is ongoing with this. Um, so the earliest date has been given for this uh, building is the uh, 1511. And that was just due, due to dendrochronology they had done uh, to wood beams inside. Um, it gave um, date of 11, uh, 11 or 1512 that the wood was felled and so this is thought to give um, evidence for its origins. It, it's, it's a very murky one really um, in terms and I think this is what the whole interest is with this group sort of finds us possibly trying to see if we know any more is because there's a lack of information and I will agree with them that the medieval period can be quite difficult in terms of getting uh, any sort, sort of documentation. And that was part of my diss was that we shouldn't really lie, rely on documentary sources. Rather use the documentary source to complement the archaeology. Sometimes they can go in hand in hand. Um, <coughs> obviously, we can't go hacking at the ground. Um, <laughs> it's, it's sealed. It's like Cardiff. Um, it does make me think what is underneath Cardiff's uh, roads because it, it, it's all sealed. We can't do anything about it. And then you hear that people are doing renovations on a shop building or even on a house and they start finding things like the uh, fantastic French jug that they found um, in Cardiff, uh, St. Mary Street. So this building, I, I think the fact that it's still there and it, it, it's just got every little aspect that I love. Um, the, the, the little doorway, I just love the way that looks. Um, the windows itself. Mm. Um, personally, to me, this would have uh, been some, some money. And I was thinking different things as well. I was thinking, is it a manor house? Um, is it a house for a, 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 a monastic sort of uh, uh monastic order and then I thought no it's too small and then I thought is it a religious individual a clergyman um mm. and I think that's what we're trying to piece together is that we know so much about his recent history is finding out about his origins um so I just want to quickly look at an um, article a minute um it was an article that I found um you can get them online at uh, Lenny um do fantastic uh, articles that you actually read um Archaeology Wales that actually, um, so not Archaeology Cymru, Archaeology Wales that actually helped them with this. Um, and they were looking at Bridgend and they were saying in terms of Bridgend in this area, um, <coughs> from the church to, hang on, I'm just going to have a drink, I've got a bit of a dry throat. Um, 
from the um, castle and the church is nearby. So St. Yiltyds is what I'm going to mention. Is that, um, uh, from aerial photography, from lidar imagery that they've used, they do feel like that there was a medieval settlement in this area. And that's why for Manor House, because it seems quite grand and big. And I was just thinking of the characteristics of a Manor House, um, possibly would have had more obviously um but I, I just don't know that the front part of it the porch is georgian um so um it, it's much earlier than the uh, rest of the building um but um, certain parts of it has been demolished etc so um they, 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 even people would look at um st iltage church which we'll get into but they found some medieval pottery iron objects cl um glass as well that was close to the castle um, disturb human bones in the churchyard um, <clears throat> and it, it's some fantastic archaeology that's going on here and they're showing that this is a historic landscape and something to actually be uh, quite uh, close because it is so rich here um, and there's other ways that we can look at this. Koff Lenny is doing some fantastic uh, work in terms of this, even looking at the Romans, the early medieval period, which I know early medieval period can be quite problematic. Um, this 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 Newcastle itself emerged as a, an important market centre. So Newcastle and Britain, not um, Newcastle in England. Um, but there's no indication that it expanded to a very large settlement. It just seemed to, just a, an average settlement of a, a good size. It wasn't too small. It wasn't too big. Um, and there was evidence of trading. And it, it, it developed even into the 18th, uh, 18th to the 19th century of being an important market town for the, for the agricultural centre. And you can see how this would have uh, alluded to this being a very important place. Well, the Normans have a castle um, there. So to me, uh, it would suggest that it was important that you wouldn't just build a castle that, uh, uh, for no reason there. Um, but looking at the origins of this, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, the only issues I have is that the dates that are being thrown around are a little bit iffy. Like I said, the dendrochronology is given 1511-1512. Um, but the National Lottery Fund have actually quoted 1400s, and then you see some other sites that give another date. <coughs> so it, it, it's, it's really frustrating to actually try and gather uh, what's going on. It just seems very murky, because I think it's in its early days of um, having that attention but I just want to quickly mention about the lottery fund um, it was a, a grant that was to enable St John's House Trust um, it was formed in 2012 um, and its sole purpose was to purchase this fantastic grade two listed building and transform it into heritage um, that would be key to the community um, at the time, they had um, 80 volunteers that would go work in local schools, community groups. They would have interactive displays, and they'd even have the creation of the tea shop that's there as well. Um, uh, Jennifer Stewart, who's the head of uh, um, uh, uh, the Heritage Lottery Fund, um, so she talks about um, that this is part of our key, key areas in Wales, knowing more about our heritage. And they're aiming to not ensure that this historic building is uh, protected, but also we're able to learn so much more about its long and interesting history. Um, so like I said, the, the, the 1400s is what they give the origins to. Um, so they've said that this was the old religious building in Bridgend. Um, they said some parts date back to the 1400s, not all of it. So maybe the dendrochronology for some of the would be being 1500s could have possibly been um, evidence of maybe um, maintenance or even um, just expanding on it. Um, maybe it just started off smaller and just got bigger from there. Um, to me, that would suggest that there was a wealthy individual living there. Um, but um, some accounts can say that this was a stop off for pilgrims on the way to St. David's. Others would suggest that this was a medieval hospital. Um, <coughs> and this is all down to um, what well, the locals are um, sat there and, and trying to find out themselves, which sometimes it can, it can help to find out what the locals can say, but it seemed like is uh, shrouded in a lot of confusion and mystery, which is really frustrating when you're trying to find out the truth.
So the chair of the trust, he said um, their aim is to obviously safeguard the building, um, but also to ensure that the local community are able to uh, go there and have a sense of their own local heritage. Um, because it's a key part in the area's history for five centuries, over five centuries, and we now are able to create this as the whole neighbourhood and sort of make a positive contribution to the area, the community, and the <coughs> so the dates of the, the, the origins of the building do differ. I think it does depend on which part of the building they're looking at. Mm. Um, but it's definitely a fun and St John's House, for example, um, they have some fantastic um, information um, online. They have their own little website and you can even have this interactive uh, timeline that you can click on. Um, so the first date they're given, like I said, 5th and 11, this uh, green oak that was used in the house as well. Um, and that's what they were able to test. Um, <coughs> and it, it, this was a townhouse. Um, it had a half as well and a passage um, house style and plan of a, a store yard uh, porch, which was later in the Georgian period. There was a hall there. There was a single room that would open to the roof above and there was um, a central passage separating the halls from the twin service rooms. Um, and you have these set in stone doorways from Ogmore. Um, and Ogmore is important, I think, to pretend it is part of the trade, um, the trade link as well, and we see um, evidence of that. And what we're seeing here is that is some rich um, evidence coming forward in terms of all of this. Um, and it's just there for us to actually be deciphered. Um, main chamber, which is the uh, sit end, has a loft above. Um, and the carpenter is marked into the beams, um, and there's three walls as well as cut that we've carved stone windows upstairs. Um, one thing I want to say is that um, I couldn't find any evidence of these murals, and um, basically there's no images online, which is quite frustrating. Um, but I heard things about uh, sort of uh, flowers, um, and I was just sat there thinking, how do we know that those flowers weren't added? in the 1800s, because this is part of the occupiers were. And I know that that were used to um, express more um, than, uh, than just what the flowers are in the Victorian period. It was a way of communicating. So I was just thinking, putting those murals on there, um, could it mean something uh, different? Because we see that with um, um They have all these uh, lovely uh, plants on the wall and mean all different um the pomegranates uh, was interesting to actually read about as well but um things etc they all have meaning um but as we do 791 um so obviously from the 1500s to the 1700s there's no evidence of anything going on here really um document wise in 1791 um on the 22nd and 21st of november um they have documents talking about the lease and the release of these dates um made to a, uh, a Walter Coffin and to Thomas Williams of the first part and then Reese Roberts the second part and, and Charles Llewellyn on the third part <coughs> which is quite interesting so these are the uh, murals that I uh, have here and this is where people are alluding to this Knights Hospitallers um and it it, it, it is a little bit frustrating because uh, it did come from the Victorian period. Um, there was a, a medieval hospital and it was connected to the hospitalers. And I don't think that's true at all. Um, I think that this was just trying to get an understanding. So we'll have some uh, quotes being read uh, in a bit. Um, this is where it gets its name, St John's Houses. It, it was locally known as St John's Hospice in the early 16th uh, century. Um, and possibly that's where they could have possibly got this uh, illusion from. But this date, I've given it um, the 1500s just because it's based on the technology. Um, but uh, absolutely fantastic. There's a great two listed building in 1952, and opening it up, people are allowed to uh, see these fantastic things here. So, um, I'm sure, what do you guys think? I felt like that bird wasn't a dove, it, it didn't look like a dove. To me. I know it can look like it, but to me, I had a sense that it was a crow. Um, and a crow, 
has um, completely different meanings for them. I know that um, I know possibly they thought of this as a dev. This is where St. John's come from, because um, St. John the Baptist and with, with the devs are really um, coming into play with all that Holy Spirit. Um, but I was just thinking this looks more like a crow to me, the way that they're representing the wings, um, and even the claws, and even just down to the big person myself. Oh, um, it looks isn't like- isn't um, St. John an eagle? Oh, that's Mark. That's Mark. Is it? They're all represented. I think so. I, 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 they're, they're like represented in um, one is a, an eagle, one is a man. Um, oh, <laughs> sorry. I, no, I'll sorry. Right. I'll look quickly uh, have a look at it now. E uh, go. But um, I think it was St. John the Evangelist rather than St. John the Baptist. You know, that's that's Saint John. Yeah, the, 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 the actually, Anne, I actually would actually go with that. Um, the fact that it's an eagle, um, only because of uh, I, I've just quickly googled it, um, and it just looks rather similar than um a crow, which that's absolutely fantastic, Anne, because I oh, think I it might have actually helped you. Oh. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking John the Baptist, uh, John Saint John the uh, Evangelist, um, and this one is from the uh, 1400s. If you can see me on the screen, um, I'll show you at the end. But yeah, it's got more sort of rounded heads, and maybe that's where it makes sense. A lot of people were sort of talking about what it could be, and I was sort of thinking, um, just look at crows as well in terms of medieval iconography. Yeah, um, it did kind of look a little bit like the medieval crow. Yeah. But the only thing that that, that that I agreed with into being a, a crow entirely was that, that this uh, lovely uh, cross here, um, which you do see with the, the hospitalers, for example. And I think maybe that's where the, it's coming from. Oh, um, that's maybe yeah, that's definitely, you know, St. John's, uh, St. John's mm. Hospital, you know, hospitalers, you know, symbol. Yeah, it's a Maltese cross, is it? Yes. Oh. Sorry, um, I, I was I just thinking. It's a fan. I was just thinking if it was a crow, and I just like the the way that the crows are represented, for example. Um, yeah. It's 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 it's, it's, it's compared to a turtle dove, but they take responsibility for um, looking after the offspring and, and and helping the young. And I was just sort of looking at it this way. Um, Maybe it was a crow, and maybe there was uh, some sort of relation with the hospitalers, but maybe that's not saying that it was a hospital or a hospice. I think that maybe it was a religious individual, possibly a priest, because there is um, some sort of a priest actually um, living in this house in the medieval period um, and acting it to the church. I was just thinking, possibly, um, be evidence of this person's devoting themselves to this iconography and this just meaning more to them. But the, um it, it leads flocks well um and it it it, it will so it does some horrible ideas to them but i'm thinking it, it can represent the same as well and 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 just sort of prophecy um i was just thinking maybe this just and keeping um all of their it, devotion they're just showing it off um in these lovely plastic uh, motifs or um uh, move whatever you want to um and here, um, <clears throat> I don't know if any of you can see, um, that's, IC, uh, that's IHC, which uh, means Jesus. Um, so again, I was just thinking maybe representing the, um, the devotion. Um, but you can also see the fish there, which, uh, again, I, I, you think of fish yeah. in terms of Christianity is all throughout the Bible. Mm-hmm. First thing that jumps to my head is feeding the fire. And here as well. Um, not sure if it has any ideas of of what's going on with that star. Um, but it it just seemed like it doesn't fit there at all. And then at the bottom, I don't know whether it, it was me in terms of I need to get new glasses, but it looked like a little sort of um theme sort of thing with a tail at the end. And I was just thinking, um, what we like to remind themselves um in the medieval period of temptations and. Maybe that was just a way of um, Jesus being the sort of ruling factor here in terms of the fish. Um, this demon's 
just a reminder of the tension that you could have. Um, and if, if this was a priest or so heavily devoted, um, and this would be right up their street because they it's almost like, um, especially with mist, they like to plague themselves with things that are bad to see if they can get, with, you know, with temptation. Um, if, if I, no, I, I definitely don't think this is... Go on, Anne. If there's no more evidence of, of, of a house, I think, you know, why <coughs> couldn't this be the house, the church house? You know, why couldn't this be... Yeah belong to the house you know to the church um yeah the medieval church so maybe that's where the priests did live you know um but he might, he might i, I he agree might with been, you man he might have been quite a big you know house like you might have had staff and everything you know and mm. people come to live there uh, to stay yeah. you know no. yeah well that that would make sense if pilgrims were stopping there and mm. it, you, you had a priest that was living there um because it, it would be a good stop off and um could possibly um have a blessing or something from the priest and just sort of yeah. company um because again it would kind of be god's hacks in some sort of way as well yeah. um so that's what i was thinking mm. but it's more of a religious person rather than it being um a, 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 something to do with the night hospitality um but i want to give you um some quotes um, that really affected what we saw uh, and how we see this. So an article from the South Echo from 1896, it notes that the Cardiff Nat Naturalist Society took part in a field walk here. Um, it led um, William Ryan archaeologist described that he visited the hospice of the hospitalers of St. John of Jerusalem at Newcastle Bridgend. Mm -hmm. um, the deep um, notes that the hospice of the Knights Hospitallers of St John still exists in Newcastle Gen. On the front wall is carved stone bearing a device and a monogram. Um, so again, yeah, I think Eagles and I was 827 there as well with the history of Marley. Um, so it was a brief mention. Um, but even in terms of the story of the St Iltage Church, um, Edward Lovell shares these notes uh, regarding the house. He said the greater proportion of the building the early um, 1500, much alteration and reconstruction took place in the 19th century. Um, like this, the original accommodation can be uh, readily identified. Many interesting details, such as stone arch doorways and winding staircases and moulded oak beams of period design remains in, in, uh, remaining in position. Critical features, however, a fine tablet now fixed into the front wall. Um, so, like I said, I've mentioned them. Um, the ice HC is this seems to be um, a, a, a focus here. <coughs> I was thinking, is it as well at the bottom, or is it evidence of possibly um, maybe like a sort of protecting? Um, Fervor as well, um, that strong sense of courage. Um, this this is um, something that's shown off of pride, um, and you can see how um, in the list of St Iltage Church records, 1660, Thomas Ap Jenkin uh, Philip was a resident and keeping hospitality here. Um, but the connection between St John's House and the Order of St John of Jerusalem um, was uh, the. the known and it is it, been suspended as through time so um i'm not sure what everyone takes from that um i've now changed my mind i don't think it's a crow but even if it was a crow it would be quite nice anyway um it could just represent protecting generation maybe guiding them in terms of religion and then letting them fly off carry on with that religion and those beliefs um as time goes on maybe if this was a priest maybe he wanted to think of himself like a crow that he was looking at the younger generations and um, the ones that are quite young in terms of their knowledge and their journey with god and that he's helping them guide them and eventually you'll just let them soar off and you can just think of this in different ways um um, I just think a very confusing way of looking at that bird. It, it frustrates me because at one point I was thinking one thing and another, and now and you've, you've thrown a spanner in the works and completely different. So I'll write that to tomorrow if they do come over. Um, so I just wanted to quickly touch upon the modern occupants here as well. Um, to talk about 
actually do know here. Um, like I said, nothing's known before 1794 because there's no document. But um, you had a lease and a release of these dates, uh, respectively, the release made between Walter Coffin and Thomas uh, Williams. And you have Rhys Roberts in the second part and Charles Llewellyn in the third part. But in 1826, an indenture of mortgage of this date made between uh, the second Llewellyn of the one part and Evan Rhys in the other part. <coughs> and then in 1827, at least in of this date, um, respectively, the release was made between the said uh, Charles Llewellyn on the one part and then uh, Robert um, Robert um, on the other part. So you can just see how this is all connections. And here in 1861, um, we have that census of the Lewis family that was living here in this house, um, to Castle Hill. Um, and this was used as houses at the time. So it was number 20 and number 22. Um, and the, the, the Reese family, and um, believe maybe possibly that's the Reese that we're seeing in those two images over there um, that are provided here. Um, and it, it, it's funny, so these are people that, that would live their home, um, and it was enough to fit the family. So I think it was, was somewhere that possibly a priest lived and would have pilgrims over and meditate, etc. I remember um, as a child, we went to this retreat and it was only um and it was only my class um because it wasn't big enough for the whole year um and we did uh, sit and meditate in the evening we talk about things and i think that's what i was just getting a sense to this if this was what it was in the medieval period i definitely think there's a connection um, with the church and the castle but you see that the individuals um that, that, that live here that would have loved this home they would have had arguments they would have had love they would have had excitement, they would have had disappointment, dreams, they would have had light bulb moments, been cooking food together. Um, just talking, you can imagine the children bickering at side. There's a little girl and a little boy um seen in that image there on the um on the left hand image. Um but this is the uh, physical evidence that we do have, and I think it's nice that we have that census there. Um but the Lewis family occupied one of the two houses in 1861, and it was purchased by the Order of St. John of Jerusalem in 1919. So maybe that's where this confusion along as well. Prior to this, um, the Lewis family lived at the old uh, Bridge Street in Newcastle Bridge End. Um and that, I just think that's fantastic because it just adds a different aspect at all. I just want to quickly also show you the Georgian extension and um, so this is definitely um if we go back to that that's what the house looks like now and that's the Georgian extension so maybe that's why they could have more families in there because it's a little bit more of an extension um the Georgian extension personally to me uh, it, it it was it was demolished in the 1930s and in this 1930s they did find a bell um the bell um you can find online in the National uh, Museum of Wales but I couldn't get a copy of the photo um because my dream basically was saying that i had uh, no permission to do so um, but the, this is a um an, an extract from the western mail in march the 13th 1936 um so they found an old brass bell of unusual design which according to the national museum of wales authorities is of late celtic technique and has been discovered during excavations carried out by von Workers at the medieval building stand Newcastle Hill Regent at the office of the King Francis Hospital of St John's. Um, so it's due to this uh, demolition of the of the extension that they found this. Um, it was uh, it was a room that they had where it was demolished. They found it uh, in between the walls. Um, and they even have letters here. So um, Mr. Uh, Monroe, that's all, all he signed it off was in 1936 on March 9th. He wrote about the bell um, and he submitted it to the National Museum of Wales, where it's actually been kept. But he did a drawing at first and then um, he sent it off. But in July 1936, Edward Lovelock re received a letter from a W. Uh, Grimes. This letter talks about the National Museum of Wales request to have a bell on loan while the hospice was being stored. Um, the bell was loaned to the National Museum um, and it was it stayed there ever since. 
Um, so this extension has helped out a lot in terms of all of this. Um, <coughs> does make you think what's hidden in all the other walls um but it, it's basically um quite a large rectangular uh, bell it's quite unusual it looks like um, a large version of what you could possibly find on a cow's neck and um, when you draw a cartoon cow and um, that's what it looks like and um it's definitely unusual maybe um if that's the case if this was something that was religious maybe a religious house um for uh sort of uh, this time period maybe um to me maybe call and over um, people have around and have a worship and maybe tell stories um about god and to to, to uh and uh, i think it just seems very um very unusual and definitely a lovely little find and i get it to be brought back so you show it off but go on Anne. i was thinking it it, it definitely is um saint john is definitely the eagle the symbol is the eagle um yeah and um i was thinking you know because i've been up there i, I think you've got to look at it in in context of, of where it is and and um it's a very very steep hill and um mm. you know there's a church and a castle there so all the all the other houses, they're all Victorian, you know, little terrace mm. houses. They're all little terrace houses. But there are a few big houses there. So I think it was probably quite sparse, you know, not a lot of houses up there at one time. And um, yeah, this does it's Coughlenny very, actually. Very, it looks very different. Yeah, it looks very different from the other houses. So you can see Coughlin has mentioned um, that, that the fact that there was possibly a tent there, but it wasn't sort of tightly packed. Um, it was quite spread out. Yeah. Um, and so it, I was having a look on it in, into the map. It's not far from uh, the church. It is not far from um, the uh, castle. Well. Um, you tend to see the church um, functions in terms of that really close to a castle and um, it's part of his protection and, um, and I think again it's part of our authority and I think it, especially uh, normal which would want to keep the church on site because uh, we start to see in the time period that this was possibly created where the, where the, uh, the church had a little bit more power um, and also having a, a plan and even the migration of people in terms of pilgrimages and even but uh, yeah. just part of people's identity as well so that's what i was thinking actually with this being an area that was important for trade as well and um, you are going to have people coming and going and i think it would help to have some sort of um, place for people to possibly stay and worship mm -hmm. if they were part of a, being a pilgrimage um and it, it all fits in the hand i think this migration of people and it's, it's helped with the identity of bridge ends as well um, but like you said, Anne, I just wanted to bring some other asks here. Um, I, yeah. I love that uh, Im image there of the um, of the castle. Yeah. Oh, um, the entrance way, I thought it was quite Romanesque. Um, yes. Again, I think this. Uh, yes, I think it was the Rome, uh, the Normans trying to sort of take on that aspect of the Romans uh, because they possibly have seen all these old uh, Roman uh, structures that were crumbling or still uh, uh, intact. Maybe they were, ooh, we'd want to sort of, uh, it, it, uh, you know, sort of show off that we're little Romans, we're using still star mm. power. Um, and I think there's just firm evidence that we're having a castle like this in this area. It was important trade, it was important, there was people living here, um, possibly not a big government, but a, a way for the North to be push their power further um, and I think it was definitely an important training centre and with that you are going to have pilgrimages which would make sense if this was a priest house that they were bring in to worship as well but the St Eltage Church for example this is a Victorian church with gothic design it's absolutely beautiful um, it's thought to be uh, oh. reconstructed on top of an old 14th century church so the 1300s so th this would be quite um and obviously uh, things start kicking up then as trade goes on after the the the, you know, the 1300s things start to kick off the in for in my mind 1900s for trade because a little bit left we do have a uh, 
infra and a decrease of population and obviously um, settlements decreasing and increasing. But to me, this suggests in the fry town, it continued to grow. This catch of cattle, this, uh, to me, it didn't seem to fit entirely with Sion's house. I think the castle was there as um, administrative and it was there for power and it also helped in terms of trade. But I think it, John's house had more of a connection with the church rather than the castle. Um, I think the church then is obviously having a connection with the castle. So it makes sense that the castle has a connection to the church, the church has a connection to St. house. And I think the connection with St. John's house is that a priest did live there. That's what I think it was. That uh, was uh, the priest's uh, little sort of... Uh, chill out party a few pilgrims so he'd talk about god he would sort of take on this aspect of tea people fly off um, uh, and take on that, uh, that religion uh, uh, and take it on for themselves so i thought quite an interesting sort of aspect of it but like bridgens called things faked his card if the army it is skilled and these modern development but it's fantastic that we have this fantastic uh, the castle still there. Um, I just a really nice image to get hold of. Get some images that are really um, problematic. But I just want to have a look at the old bridge we uh, have evidence of here. And um, this is great to listed um, as well. It dates back to um, so the medieval structure, two stone arches, um, and it was spanned the river of Moor and Bridgend and the town name in Welsh was uh, of Nabont Aroga, which means main bridge by the river, river Ogmore. Um, and I think again, you just imagine people coming back and forth with trade. Um, I think it just shows evidence that, that there was obviously um, some connections with like little settlements, maybe sort of moving forth and um, give connections to these uh, structures. Um, and, even pilgrims, pilgrims, maybe they would have wandered across, or even on their little uh, sort of uh, horse and uh, little cart sort of imagine. Um, but there's a plan and the race as well um, talks about this, uh, the tra- crossing over this bridge um, uh, between sort of the uh, north settlements of Old Castle and the east side of North, um, uh, which is on the west of Newcastle. And grew on the eastern side of the bridge, um, which is where his name ends. Wanna... Excuse me, Jess, is anyone else having problems with the sound? Uh, it's... We're only hearing like a portion of what you're saying, really, but um... it's a little echoey. Sort of echoey. Oh, right. Okay, it is recorded, so I'll send out privately to you guys. I think it, it could possibly be an action. Oh, okay. um, Bit of I hate Zoom at the moment. It, I don't know about you guys, but I had a new um, Windows update. So everything will find Andy more or less on here. But whilst listen, when you guys are talking, sort of because you can normally stay on on Zoom and do other things, but I can't do that anymore because all of the crackly and echoey. So maybe. It is an issue there. I will go and get the laptop fixed because I don't know what I'm doing. I think if I touch buttons, it'll break. Um, but this, 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 you can just imagine this being a bustling town. And I think it's just evidence on the east side of this bridge is where the town of Bridgend lived onwards. Um, and there's even sort of, um, even on the left wall of the old bridge as well, there's another plaque there that, that sort of talks about this, uh, this uh, tremendous flood um, that affected part of the western side in 1775 as well. Um, so again, it, they talk about um, that they uh, it, it, it was, literally thousands of books on Amazon every single month. And you know the crazy thing? I didn't write these. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> no, it's just that. For good. This changes everything we know about enlarged prostates. If you have a swollen <laughs> prostate. <laughs> So if I stop share, who where's the noise coming from? Is that you guys or me? I think it's me. Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Anne. I was a bit confused. Well, we're nearly finished anyway. So if I quickly get on to everything, because this was the final slide. But yeah, this, bridge, this, this bridge was important because 
um, there's a lot of history going off there and it was just showing how it allowed to have connections. I do think you can imagine people coming up to this river as well and maybe some boats um, from current slides, blah, 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 blah. But it, <clears throat> its origin in 1425 and it just started to grow. Um, and then eventually we had um, uh, that this uh, that the bridge was named Jens um, because it absorbed Knowlton and Newcastle as the uh, surrounding areas. Um, so I think when we get to the end of the uh, 1500s is when this town starts boom, loads of people are living here. Um, a great place for trade, a um, great place for connections. Um, and I definitely think the church has more of a connection to St John's House than the, the castle. I think the castle was administrative, so it would have had connections to the church and St John's House. Um, but not strongly um, connected to St John's House in the church. I think the church was um, there, it was where people could gather, um, but St John's House was where the pilgrims could come and rest and have a more intimate um, sort of relationship with the priest before they went on to the uh, St David's. So, um, <clears throat> like I said, the buildings open last Saturday of each month, and I think there needs to be more support the building to ensure that the knowledge is being found on the building that is kept for future generations that we get we're still continuing to love and I think I'm obviously going to do some more independent study I I want to go to the archives if any of you want with me in the future to go and have a look at anything we can find from the older genera uh, older um aspects but in terms of church as well um they found um evidence of medieval pottery um, they found some ham green ware there as well. Again, connections with Bristol, um, which I love. It's shown that we're having wider connections in the Severn Estuary and the Bristol Channel as well. It's a big help to South Wales. And I think that the Evans Ham pottery, I think there was a small amount of red ware as well, some pottery from Ireland. I think all the pottery is suggesting that there was some good trees here and that it was important, not just religion, but also for, for trade and agriculture, and, and this allowed this wealthy family or a priest to actually grow um, and have this fantastic uh, building. But the lack of documentation is making this invasion difficult. So if I was going my own independent study deeper, I think I'd go um, away from this and go towards maybe sort of physical archaeology instead. So... Um, <clears throat> If I stop here, um, and is there anything that you'd like to ask or add? I, again, I'll send you all the uh, videos. I'll post it on uh, the Archaeology Camry page. Um, obviously, make sure to uh, skip where I was trying to uh, share a screen. Um, but, Anne, is there anything that you'd like to ask or add? I really love the fact that you brought the eagle into that. I think oh. it was a light bulb moment. <laughs> you know, it just, it just popped out <laughs> because I, I remember the symbols, you know, but it, it, it's, it is a difficult one, isn't it? To um, You don't know whether it's a crow or an eagle, but it's not a dove. <laughs> no, it's not a dove. We, we can rule that one out. Um, yeah. But I, I, I love the um, the IHC, for example, um, yeah. because we had that in our um, in badge, Corpus yeah. Christi, which I absolutely yeah. love. Um, so it was, I was like, oh, I know what that is. Um, whereas it looks like a lot of twisting, doesn't it? Um, from uh, a, a, you know, brief glance. Um, and I think it's fantastic to get your interpretation if I find anything as well. Yeah, it's, it's uh, no, it's, it's a good in introduction, you know, because um, obviously there's a lot more to find out eventually. <laughs> well, we hope. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, maybe, definitely, there yeah, four, like, maybe, maybe there were four symbols, like there's the four evangelists, you know, there's um, one is the eagle, one is a man, <coughs> uh, known as man, um, and one's a lion, and oh, I've forgotten them now. <laughs> I've, I've gotten them, but, um, you know, there are four, right, and four, four symbols, and... Um, it would be interesting to see if they've got any more in the house somewhere. Yeah, no, that's yeah. No, I think uh, it, I think that's uh, what we should do. Maybe if we have um, a little trip down at Bridge End, um, not next month, but uh, the month after, yeah. the month after, um, yeah. have a little investigation ourselves. Um, 
and maybe grab a tea or a coffee there as well yeah. um, and sort of see if we can find things as well mm-hmm. and that yeah. might not jump it's, out straight away I think it's nicer inside now than than even outside you know they because they do weddings mm. they they did a few weddings in in the hall so that's great yeah you know, you know. yeah <laughs> thanks yeah Jeff. that's perfect thank you Anne. thank you and um, Pat anything that you'd like to uh, ask to add no, no, it's very interesting. What time are they open on the last Sunday, Saturday? Probably oh, t- 10, I would think. Oh, we have to find Yeah, that. I think it's open from 10 o'clock um, and possibly last entry. 10 to 4, 4 5. Yeah, oh, 10 to yeah. 5. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's volunteers there, huh? Right. Yeah, perfect. Um, I visited it once before. I remember a tour or something. But is there tea and coffee there now, you say? Yeah, yes. there's a... There's a nice little uh, tea coffee place there. Um, it, you can actually have a, a nice sort of tea or coffee and a little possibly a gossip or even just discuss what you could have possibly <laughs> found there. Yeah, they've got um, they've got books, you know, like, you know, like it's a place to sit and read books and, and have a coffee. Yeah, well, we should do that, Anne, you and I. Yeah. On yeah. a Sunday, a nice day. But it's not yeah, nice. you're nice. <laughs> not this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no not this weekend it seems a bit treacherous again um so horrible already Graham. um so i'm not sure about you guys thank you pan as well um richard anything that you have to uh, add yeah that's the only thing i found a bit it was like it looked a lot grander now than what it did the, the earlier photo yeah, said that extension yeah. was knocked down in the 30s, mm. and there's no the later shots, they're all mullioned windows with stained glass. And you know, the but the earlier photo looked like it had really sort of basic sort of mm-hmm. windows to it. Yeah, yeah and, and, and I'm thinking if it was a priest's house, maybe it would be a little bit more basic because, yeah. um. You wouldn't want to distract so much uh, from your devotion um, and maybe kinds of things to the church. And maybe as time gone on, where people have more money, they've sort of added effects to it. But that's what I could think of in terms of especially the extent and then removing it again. And um, it just seems like it, it's changed based on the owner that it's had. And I think it, the, the main mystery of it all is the, the owner uh, or the occupier. Yeah. No, but thank you, Richard, and thank yeah, you guys. Um, was, sorry that no, I the finished late. Yeah, it just looked more sort of basic. Sort of, I don't know when that photo was taken. I would have thought sort of early late nineteenth century or something. Yeah. You know, and then the pictures today with these mullioned windows, as you say, it looks like um, it sort of had like a Victorian makeover or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they'd like to be in a bit grand and show you off really, didn't they? Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think that's what it is, is sort of looking past um, those time periods and sort of trying to look further, see what it's like. But Coffany and great reports. Um, well, I'll, do, I'll post it on the Archaeology Can We Pay Well, the report. And you can have a look, it does cover the whole Bridgend area. So it's not just uh, any uh, specific area, but Thank you guys for tonight. Sorry, went over by a bit, and uh, have a lovely evening. And okay. Uh, for well, yeah, all the best. Next week tomorrow. or tomorrow. I hope somebody comes. Yes, and look after yourself. Yeah. Okay. Thank Bye, you. Everyone. Okay. <laughs> Bye. 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 All the best. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Trying to find my button. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> You've got you've got the u- usual Bryn Evans from Ashlinetti. Tom's listened, and you've mm. got uh, Evid who's been on tonight. So yes, yeah. Carl, I had to log into your one. So um, next time you uh, log in, check that it's not my name and not uh, and yours. Right. Okay. Um, only because I, I couldn't share screen, I couldn't get hold of. You. I had to try and oh, log Christ, in you, from you another should, way. You should have said. I tried calling you. What? Oh, you're, you're not going to. Oh, right. I, I had. You I logged in the whole as thing. you, and then. Pardon? I had you on for the whole thing. I didn't. All oh, right. Okay. 
No, it's fine. Can't we sort it in the end? And I know what to do in the future. So, uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Well, you've got you've got to mm-hmm. sign out and you've got to sign back in. Yes, I, I'll log all out now and then I'll uh, sign back in. All right. Okay. Oh well, it's been on live anyway. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Anyway, Carl, I'll, I'll speak to you soon. I'm going to have something to eat. But thank you to everyone that's been watching online as well. Obviously, like, share, um, subscribe, comment um, is greatly appreciated. Yeah, no, that's been great, uh, Jessica. We'll we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And um, yeah, see you I'm, tomorrow. I'm coming in closing. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Thanks for that. Brilliant. They loved it. Bye. Anyway, thanks for everybody watching on um, YouTube and uh, the little gang that we've got on YouTube. And uh, again, it's uh, next week, um, 5.45. More um, avenues and uh, uh, curses monument. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll speak to you all then. And uh, yes, that that'll be great. Anyway, um, anyway, um, we'll thanks for watching and, um, and subscribe. I'm drifting now, and uh, thank you very much. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Night night.